I thought it would be really cute to just do some light coloring in February's design. So I'm only going to color in the hearts. And I thought I would use a kind of a pinkish thread to stitch out the rest of it. And I wanted these hearts in the basket to kind of separate from each other or to stand out. So some I colored in a little darker than others. You can see that. So to color it in, you just want to do a really light coat and then you just apply more and more coats to make it darker and darker. And then the next step will be to paint a little layer of this Jacquard textile medium over the colored parts so that the color is set so that when I stitch it, the color won't rub off on my hands. The thing you want to be careful about is not taking the Jacquard medium and spreading it out this way because the color will run out into this other area. So you want to keep that medium just right on the parts that you've colored. And same with the hearts. I'm going to be really careful just to do this little heart and then this little heart separately like that. So that's how I'm going to color this little one in. So here it is, all stitched in. And I did go back after I finished stitching and I recolored some of these. I didn't put a fixative on it because it's not probably going anywhere because I'm not going to wash this piece. But um, I like it with just a little bit of color and the thread matches it great. So that's an option for you for this month of February, these two little lovebirds here. And then I decided to do it with um, a bunch of different colors. And if you're familiar with my Forest Park animals, they're these little stuffed animal toys for kids. It, that's what it kind of reminds me of. They're little characters like this and they use fun colors and stuff. So on this, I'm using several different colors, which are all listed on the pattern. And we do have a few different stitches. So I thought I would go over some of those. Um, I happen to have my thread right here. So I'll show you this one. Um, just very, very simply, when you have a small stitch like this, I just take a single stitch. So I'll go up and down. And I'm gonna come up over on this side and down. And then that's all finished. Another thing I wanted to show you is this fun new thing I got. I usually prop my knee up to stitch on. And somebody suggested, and I had seen these, it's a uh, adjustable table, kind of lap table. It's called a lap app. And it has a little magnet at the bottom down here for um, your scissors and um, the one that I, the way it came, sorry, is with um, uh, some fabric by Lynette Anderson, who I love, really sweet lady, and it had a little pocket here. I went ahead and, and recovered mine with some of my fabric, and they even give you the, the directions on how to do that, which is pretty cool. So I will give you the information on this. I, I got it at the little quilt shop. I ordered it online. And they sell all things Lynette Anderson here in the States. She's uh, Australian. But again, cool, cool lady. So um, anyway, I want to pass that along. And hopefully that'll kind of help as I'm showing you if, it has, if I have something flat to lay it on. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little knot. And I usually tie two knots, one down at the base. And then I do another one just above it like that so that I have a little space in between and then I can just snip in between and I'm ready to stitch. Okay, so this happens to be the brown thread and I'm using the brown thread on this basket. I didn't trace this, um, but pretend that there's a line <laughs> right there. So there's going to be a little row of running stitches. So, you know, the running stitches are down here on his pant legs too. And the way I do it, I just draw a straight line because I use the Pilot Friction Pen. So it's gonna come out with the heat of an iron instead of tracing all the little tiny stitches. I just do one straight line. So we'll pretend that there's a straight line right across there. 
So a running stitch, you're just gonna start at one side and it's basically like a, you know, a quilting. So you're just gonna go down and up and down and up, just like that. Don't pull it too tight because it'll gather it. It's like a basting stitch. Um, I did notice somebody had mentioned something on our Facebook group about um, their stitches kind of being above the fabric rather than laying flat against the fabric. And my guess would be that would be your tension. So if sometimes that might take just a little bit of play. Um, yeah, I pull it a little bit harder than I would think I would have to. And it kind of relaxes back down. You don't want to pull it so tight when you're doing your stem stitches that it, you know, punch, bunches up. But you don't want to leave those stitches so that they're loopy on top of the fabric either. Okay, so another stitch is this little Lazy Daisy in her dress. So I did that with this green. And what you wanna do is start at the base and you kind of throw your thread up so it mimics the shape of this little leaf. You put your needle down in the same hole, bring it up at the top of the little leaf and the thread is gonna go under the needle and you pull it away from you. You don't want to pull it too tight because it will cause the little leaf to just close in. So we want to see a little loop there like that. So again, we just kind of mimic that shape. Go down in the base, up at the tip, thread goes under the needle and you just pull the needle down right on the other side of that loop to tack it in place. And that is a lazy daisy stitch. Alrighty, so the next one I'm going to show you is a French knot. And so anytime I do dots, I'm going to do either a French knot or a colonial knot. And I want them to be kind of chunky, as you can see here. So I'm going to do three wraps around my needle. So you just bring your needle up wherever the dot is. See these dots here? And you're going to wrap it three times. One, two, three then kind of keep those loops on your thread with this finger. Put your needle down really close to where you brought it up. Slide those loops down, and then you're gonna, this is what I do anyway, you're going to pinch it on top, front and back, and then just pull your needle through. And then you have a cute little dot there, French knot. So depending on how big you want to make them, you can wrap it one time, you can wrap it three times, you can go crazy and wrap it even more if you want. The other thing that I did a bit differently between the two is I went ahead and used two different colors on the hearts. So I kind of skipped around. So I used the old brick on some of them and then I used the rust color on some of them um, just to make them kind of stand out and I kind of like the way that looked. So then I move over here to the big heart and I was going to outline it but then I thought it'd be really fun to fill it in. So I used the rest on this and I just start from the outside and then just keep spiraling in and in and in and in until it gets filled in. So it's really really easy that way. So these little guys are done using the ebony almond thread. Uh, I was going to use the, what is it called? Oh, it's, it's like a tea, oh, tea dyed stone. It's kind of like a gray, but it just didn't show up enough against that fabric. So I had to take that out and start again. I also had stitched his pants in bronze, but then there wasn't, they didn't go together very well. This way they kind of tie together nicely. Okay, so for a stem stitch, you're gonna start at the beginning of wherever there's a solid line. And I'm gonna take an eighth of an inch and come back halfway in between. And I'm carrying my thread, since this is kind of an arch, I'm carrying my thread on the outside of that arch. Now I'm gonna take an eighth of an inch back in that same hole. So if you have a, if, you, if you're not liking your stitches, odds are you're making your stitches too big and 
maybe your tension is not tight enough. So they just are big loops that sit on top of your fabric. So you, that's something that you can play around with. So we can make his ear really, really pointy like that, or he can have it a little bit softer round. I think it needs to be a little bit of a softer round on that. So one thing I do sometimes is I'm gonna come around the corner of the ear, go back up in that same hole at the point of the ear, carry the thread underneath, and it's basically like a fly stitch, and then tack it. But you can just stick with a straight stem stitch the whole way through too. I'll show you, you know, the weird, funny things I do. I'm not a perfectionist. I'm the first to admit that. And so if that drives you nuts, I apologize for it. But it's more, for me, sitting and stitching is one of the most peaceful things. And it's kind of like reading and being in the middle of a good book. Or um, I just, it, it brings me a lot of piece, which right now where things are so crazy in this world, I can use as much as I can get. So that's a stem stitch. So now all I have to do is just do this little bit on his ear or her ear, and then her, she will be done. And then the only thing left that I have to decide on, and generally this is how it goes, the one thing, if I don't know what color it's going to be, it's going to wait until the very, very end so I can kind of see what it needs. So I don't know what color to fill these dots in. My first instinct was to say blue. I did a couple and I didn't like it. So I might try green, I might try pink, and uh, it might go back to blue. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. So you'll see. Oh, 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 yeah, I forgot. One more thing. Let me poke that over here while I have this pink thread on here. Um, on here, I didn't really feel like it needed their noses. For some reason, that it didn't bother me. On this one, I felt like they really needed a nose. So on this one, I added a nose. So you can do either way, whatever you want. But all I did was I just took a few straight stitches. So um, basically like satin stitches. So I just kind of made them smaller and smaller so they came to a point. Oh, I just came unthreaded. Just a minute. Okay, I have my thread in my needle again, and uh, I'm just gonna do a total of maybe three stitches. Just a little bit, just to give them the hint of a nose. So I like that better, I think. And I made it pink, because it just seems like they should have little pink noses. Sweet. Um, the only other thing, I guess, is, you know, when I did down here just the single stitches, that's the same thing I did for the little X's here and in his suspenders. On this one, I just did an outline for the buckle, but here I went ahead and just kind of filled it in, so I did a stem stitch just around a few times. I get so carried away when I start stitching these that sometimes I forget and I do a stitch that I wanted to show you before I actually start making a video. So I wanted to show you this blanket stitch and I already did it. <laughs> so I'm just going to do it down here. So again, like you do with the running stitch or what, like I do, I just draw a straight line. I don't draw all of the little teeth, but that's up to you if you want to. So you're gonna start at one end. So I'm starting down here. On that little end and I'm going to this the line is right here so I'm going to take go down about an eighth and up about an eighth and then go back down to the line and my thread is going to go under my needle and it makes a little tooth now I can just pop down another eighth go back down to the line the thread is under the needle you just want to pull the thread at that corner to pull that thread into that square. If you pull it this way, it's just gonna close up like that. So you always have to pull it away in that direction. So looking at these, they are a little bit bigger than what I did here. 
these are just little baby ones, like 16th of an inch maybe. But I thought it'd be easier to show you it doing it a little bit bigger. But I'll do little tiny ones now. And you know the neat thing about embroidery, it's not like watercolor paints or anything. You just take it out if you don't like it and try it again. So I can't wait to see what you guys do with this little guy. And thank you so much for being a part of the group. And we will see you next month. Bye.